come to praise the Lord this morning. God is good, amen. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Oh, I see light and I hear thunder. 
Y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Looking forward to this service. As you know, the first Sunday of each month, our youth um, do the, uh, the, the ministry of helps. Uh, as you notice, they were greeting us um, as we walked in and, of course, up here to sing. They'll be doing the announcements uh, and receiving the tithes and offerings. So uh, I'm, I'm so encouraged about this generation and what God's doing. Amen. They're doing an awesome job. I thank God for our leaders that are in the back, Dustin, Diet, all of them, Brooke, and, and, and uh, all of Jessica, all of them, and all the helpers. Y'all just do a tremendous, tremendous job. Thank y'all so much. And, of course, you see right here we're, we're doing a water baptism uh, at the end of the service as well. We're excited about that. And then also the men's group have put together a fundraiser, as you know, if, you, if you're first time here, uh, just to give you a quick announcement, uh, that fundraiser, all funds are going to help storm victims uh, in, the, uh, in the Tennessee area. We've connected with a pastor, Craig Shelton. Uh, he has a church in Flag Pond, Tennessee, which was affected as well as some of their families. How many know it's important that we network and, and connect, you know, with people uh, that we really know. And, uh, and his church is Sweetwater Church right there in Flag Pond. So be praying for all of them in that area. Be praying for our fundraiser. All, every single penny. We have a, a member in our church that's connected with them in such a way. We're going to uh, take all the funds. He's going to carry it up there for us. Give us a plan as far as later on if we're able to uh, bring more supplies to them. We already have some supplies in the back. And uh, so uh, if that all is coordinated well, we'll be going there as soon as he gives us the green light to do that. Amen. Please be praying for that area of the country. So let's open up with a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your presence here. We just ask you, Lord God, to have your way throughout this entire service, Lord, throughout this, this, uh, this uh, fundraiser as well. You know the needs, Lord God. Help us to connect, network, Lord, as you so uh, direct us. We thank you. We give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Praise us. 
Just worship you, Jesus. You're so worthy, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay. Darkest night, you are close like no. One. 
been so, so good with every breath.
sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome, we sing hallelujah, come on, we sing hallelujah, yes, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb, the Lamb is overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing on the cross is he overcame everything everything every obstacle that's there every sickness every disease every temptation every addiction he overcame it all in that one moment and if that light resides in you if you know what he did on the cross there's nothing that the enemy can throw in front of you that will make you nervous. There's nothing that the enemy can throw in front of you that will be able to cause you anxiety or cause you depression or cause you fear because you know the one who overcame. He's overcoming. And we just fall underneath his blood. We fall underneath what he did. We fall underneath his grace and his mercy. And we're justified in the Father's sight through what He did. We, we are we are overcomers, not because of anything that we've done, but because of what He's done for us. So the encouragement that I want to share with you is the battle's over. Your victory is secure. You will one day rule and reign with Him. The worst that the devil can do to you is send you home to meet your father. That's the worst he can do. He can't trip you up any other way. You are victorious. So when the enemy comes, stop being scared. Stop being nervous. Stop being anxious. It's over. Jesus did it. He won it. He secured it for us. Now we just got to walk out his victory. Will there be trials? Yes. Yes, we count all trials as joy because it's refining us to get closer to the Father. But this idea of a Christian that's scared of the devil, by yourself you couldn't beat the devil. But greater is he who is in you than he who's in the world. Jesus has already overcame it once and he doesn't have to overcome it again. The work on the cross was complete. It's final. So Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your victory. Lord, we thank you for your assurance, Father, that we 
through you will rule and reign victorious. That we, Father, don't have to be shackled by the burdens of this world, Lord, because you've overcame them. Lord, allow us just to have eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us to do. And we'll give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So, uh, you can have a seat. I want to call up the youth who get to do the announcements and the prayer today. We'll start off with the announcements first. Miss Sadie. Good morning, y'all. So, today we have two announcements. One of them is that all of the, um, we have a fossil eye sale that Mr. Benny cooked with fossil eye, and it should be really good. But, um, it's $10. Yeah. But uh, all that, all the proceeds will go to the missions for Sweetwater Church in Flag Pond, Tennessee. And then the second one is that obviously we are having a water baptism one today. Praise God. And, and now we'll call up Miss Charlotte for the prayer. Um, would you please bow your heads and close your eyes? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for letting us all be here. Please let us all have a blessed day. Please be with all the people affected by the hurricane. And, and please bless all of those who made the choice to get baptized today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, my youth ushers, if you, lady and gentlemen, will please come up. For those of you who don't know, um, Emery and Edson Primo are the two biggest Vanderbilt fans in the church today. Yes, I am aware of what took place. I don't know if we had to have an announcement, but I am wearing the most Vanderbilt thing that I have today to show you that I'm at least self-aware of it. Your prayers were answered. Congratulations. Um, if everyone would like to stand, uh, we do have the preschool class today and the nursery. Elementary, middle school, and high school will be staying in service today to listen to Brother Jimmy's message. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that we're able to come together and fellowship with one another. Lord, we just pray for the message that Brother Jimmy's going to deliver. Lord, that our hearts and our minds be prepared for it. Lord, let us be able to listen intently for what you have for us today. Father, we ask you to be able to bless all those who can give, Lord. Bless those who can't give. Father, bless those who are giving to missions, Lord, and the missionaries who go out. Lord, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise for what you're doing in our lives and in our church. Father, that we may bring glory to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please feel free to come give. Uh, one thing that I failed to make in, to make known in the announcement the pastelaya, if, if you've ordered it or if you're interested in ordering it it is intended to be to go uh, so we'll have it in to go containers unfortunately we just do not have enough room to be able to let everyone stay and eat, we wish we could but uh, please thank you and be considerate and uh, get your food and go thank you <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a man of God right there. <laughs> stood up and watched Vanderbilt colors. Uh, uh, stood up and wore Vanderbilt colors. Amen. I'm proud of him. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for being here this uh, this morning. I know that we, uh, we have the uh, junior high and high school staying in this morning. Um, and uh, I guess elementary is in the back, you said? Oh, elementary staying. Okay, awesome. 
I was wondering, it's like, man, the church is really full. <laughs> Usually on Sunday mornings when, when all those kids, all the children go in the back, it's like half the congregation, which is awesome. Amen. We're all good with that. And uh, I told them, I said, hey, we can switch places. If we have more children, us adults are going in the back. We'll just go into the fellowship hall. Just give them the whole building. Amen. But thank you all for being here this morning and, and uh, celebrating life together. You know, walking uh, this journey out together and being a part of what God's doing. Uh, once again, thank you so much for, you know, your faithfulness and giving, uh, not only here at New Life Worship Center, but uh, as well as uh, the different activities. How many of you know when we were raising money for our youth uh, to go to summer camp, you guys, uh, uh, y'all raised $10,000 within a matter of a couple of months. Isn't God good? Amen, amen. And look, that, that's coming from you. You know, that's coming from the families here at the church. And so we thank you so much. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we once again come to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for what you're doing in each and every person that's here in their lives. Lord God, and to their families. Lord, into the community. Lord, into this church. Help us, Lord God, to walk out your will, Lord God, this journey which we're on, Lord, to, to hear what you have to say. Uh, not just listening, but really hearing your heart, Lord God, so that we, Lord God, can be filled with the knowledge of your will, Lord God, and be fully pleasing to you. Lord, so we just turn this service, this message over to you, we just say, speak what you desire to be spoken. Help me to hear from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Thank you, Anthony. Um, one of the things that, uh, as I said, you know, earlier in what's already been said a couple of different times is, you know, our outreach uh, that's taking place this morning. That's something that Brian, God put on Brian's heart uh, probably six weeks or longer ago. And really didn't, you know, didn't know that it would be for such a time as this, uh, for that storm that's there. So thank you for hearing from the Holy Ghost, amen. And, uh, and having that together, him and I talked, and I said, what, what are we doing with the funds? He says, this is before the storm. He said, well, it's, uh, it's up to the church, up to the leadership, what you guys want to do. And then the storm came up. So uh, we thank God for that. We've got a family that will be leaving to go. Uh, in that area. Now, we do have some others that are up there already. Nicholas Savio, he's been contracted out to, uh, uh, to bring trailers up in that area. Uh, another family left uh, Thursday, I believe, to go see what they could do. I hadn't heard from them uh, to see what's happening, Andy and Melikisha. And so we're praying for them. Uh, but I know Elka, uh, Gary and Elka Mitchell will be going, be praying for them as they go. Amen. And kind of lay out the... the uh, you know, the plan, how I many of you know it's good to have a plan? We could just jump in our vehicles right now and just go up there and probably get turned right back around if you didn't know, you didn't coordinate correctly. So it's important, you know, that we do that, that we coordinate and, and we do have supplies, as, uh, as some of y'all know, uh, that's in storage right now that Walmart actually donated some time back. And we're looking at loading those up, you know, and taking it to them as well whenever that plan evolves. So I'll let you know. Some of you that are retired, there's a couple of them out there. If you would like to get involved with that and make a trip, maybe for a week or whatever, uh, please uh, let me know. We don't have dates or anything like that, but when we do, uh, and whatever the needs are, maybe clean up, maybe, you know, uh, uh, rebuilding, things like that. So uh, how many of y'all are in for that? If you raise your hand, don't mean you're signing up, just prayer, amen? Be in prayer, and then if you'd like to go. So... Anyway, we have an opportunity, as I said, to really network with that church over in uh, Flag Pond, Tennessee. And uh, I believe God's all about networking. I believe He's all about networking. And, and you know, when we think about that word networking, um, you know, it, 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 the, go with me to Ephesians. That's where I want to start this morning. Paul, he writes a letter to this church in Ephesus, and, and it's also to us as well. Uh, but, you know, to, to show us who we are in Christ um, and also to walk accordingly. Uh, but there's a reason for it. And, and I want to show you some scripture. I'm going to read out of uh, Ephesians, a couple of verses, I don't know, seven or eight or ten or so. And then we'll get right into the message. But 
If you go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, and you don't have your Bible, I know they'll put it up for you. But in Ephesians, uh, you know, there's six chapters to the book of Ephesians. And really, Paul is writing to this fairly large church in that area. And, you know, he basically brings out a bunch of points. But two major things that Paul is bringing out is really who we are in Christ and then how we're to act. I say it again, who we are in Christ, chapters 1, 2, and 3, and then chapters 4 through 6, how we're to be, right? And so I want to show you a couple of things there, and then we'll get right into the message. But Paul is showing us, you know, to show us our position in Christ. Look at verse 13 of chapter 1. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. We have those that will be baptized this morning, six right now. We have some that have signed up, and and they're going to catch us in November uh, because um, there's something called the Angola Rodeo going on up up, uh, way up there, and some of them are working. Others uh, uh, went to it, and so that's all good, cool. We we actually have five already signed up for November, and we may have another one uh, that will be in November as well. So... God is doing a tremendous work. And what's happening is these that are being water water baptized has gone to the class and understand, hey, you know, you are in Christ now. You have a position in him. How many of you glad you got a position in Jesus? How many of you glad it's not up to us, amen? It's not up to the the pastor, to the church. Uh, um, It's really, it's it's the Lord that he has engrafted us in. I don't know about you, but that's good news because he, in Psalm chapter 103, you know, when, when the psalmist is writing how good God is, he says right in around that area, he says, he remembers that we were just made of dust. Aren't you glad that God looks at us and, and, and through our imperfections and through our, our dust realize that we're just, we're just made of dust? And he is, his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Amen? So as we read the book of Ephesians in chapters 1, 2, and 3, As you give your life to Christ, and these six that have done that this morning, sometime back, I'm sure, but what they're doing is making a public declaration, an outward uh, 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 sign of what's been done inside their life. But also in that, Brian taught them this morning that not only do you do that, but you're giving God full permission through his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to whittle away and to work on you. How many of you been saved for some amount of time and God's still working on you? Come on. He's still working on us, amen? We're a work in progress. When do we finish? I guess when we take our last breath on this earth or he returns. So and, and, and as we follow this, this, this thought, what Paul's saying, who we are in Christ, the position that we have, we're sealed with his spirit. And then also chapter two, verse six, it tells us where we're seated. Isn't that cool? Now I know we're here physically, but... As God places us in in position in chapter 2, verse 6, he says, he's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but that's good news. That's good news. We have a place. We have a position. We have favor of God upon our life. Even when we miss the mark, even when we intentionally trespass, he still loves us, taking us to the woodshed, corrects us. And if we won't be stubborn or stiff-necked and, and re, if we'll repent and turn to him, uh, he, he'll get us back in line. Amen. This is good news that God has given us. Amen. I want you to know from the beginning, God desired relationship. And I'll get to that in a moment. God desires relationship with us. The Bible says we're his crown creation. He could have chosen anything he created to be his crown creation. His, his, you know, in one scripture, Ezekiel, I believe it is, and, and Jude refers to it about a, a king that has a scepter and on top of it is a royal diamond. And that's what he's calling you and I. We're, we're his prized possession. We need to grab hold of that and act like that. We need to realize who we are in Christ. He hasn't left you nor forsaken you. And so when we find this position in Ephesians chapter 4, 5, and 6, he tells us how to walk, and, and I'll just read a few verses here. In chapter 4, he says, 
I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. You need to stand up. You need to walk worthy accordingly. We're Christian. Let's walk as one. Being obedient to his word. With all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope and of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. We need to walk accordingly. In the last scripture out of Ephesians, and I may refer to it later, look at verse 16. Chapter 4, he tells us as we're together as the body of Christ. You know, we're working this thing out. In verse 13 says, till we all come in the unity of the faith, knowledge of him. We wouldn't be tossed to and fro. That's chapter, uh, that's verse 14. Speaking the truth and love, verse 15. Here we go, verse 16. For whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Do you know that we're connected with Flag Pond, Tennessee? Never knew there was a Flag Pond, Tennessee until somebody told me, I looked it up on the map. Amen? And God is, God is working. Amen? And not only in our church, but I believe those that are hearing and walking according to his spirit, Romans 8, 14, as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I, I pray that we're hearing the voice of God, the heart of God, and he is networking his church, amen? Think about that in the year that we live right now uh, um, and the fast pace that we have. My goodness, if your cell phone, you know, gets low on battery and you have to charge it, you're you probably biting your fingernails because you, you, you're going to miss something, right? I mean, just think about the the world in which we live in and how uh, fast-paced we are and how the world has really gotten probably a little bit smaller, hasn't it? We're able to connect in that way, and sometimes we look at it in a negative aspect, you know, one world government and those kind of things, and I understand that. But as the church, we're, invo we're involved with a global enterprise that is far exceeding above any other enterprises out there. It's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. It's we as believers, as Christians. And so um, uh, I tell you what, God has had networking down for a long time. So my question to you, are you, are you connected to this network? Are you connected and being fitly framed? I told you uh, from the beginning, uh, God, he had a plan. And his plan from the beginning was to have a family, and we can go through Genesis and with Adam and Eve, he told them what? To be fruitful and multiply. He goes on later on after the world, uh, after uh, humanity, uh, people just got to a place of nothing but rebellion against God. He starts over with Noah, right? And you know what he tells them? Be fruitful and multiply. This is God's plan. This is his purpose, relationship. You know, he raises us up, family, community, nation, that will honor and love and obey him. Why? Because he loves us. We're his crown creation. And though we may think we know better, God knows best. So getting back to filling the earth, Adam and Eve and Noah, turn with me, and this is kind of where my message is going to take off. Turn with me to the first book in your Bible, Genesis chapter 11. So I've kind of set it up to show you who you are in Christ, how we're to walk, being connected, being in unity, right? I believe God loves unity as long as he's involved with it. I'll say that again. I believe God loves unity as long as he's involved with it. Matter of fact, in Psalm 133, David writes how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity, right? Uh, he talks about in Psalm 133 how it's like when they uh, anointed Aaron as the high priest and they, they placed all upon him and it went all the way down to his outer garments. Talked about the, the dew that's on Mount Hermon and how it came down. 
There's, there is there's such peace and blessing in that. When we come together in unison in, as Christians, uh, God commands his blessing. Amen? And so, uh, but as long as God's involved. So if you're in Genesis chapter 11, I want to show you something. So we understand after the flood, Noah and his family were obedient. They repopulated the earth, right? Well, what happened was everyone had opportunity, just like Noah did, to, to serve a holy, righteous God. They all came from the same family, right? But what did people do? They decided to, kind of like in the book of Judges, everybody did what was right in their own eyes. They decided they'd, they'd be their own God. They'd do their own thing. And there arose such a group of people. Matter of fact, uh, uh, there were so many that, that, that rose up, they started to build uh, a tower to reach the heavens. They, oh, they were, they were unified, all right. Let's read the story in Genesis 11. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from, east, uh, from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. Then they came, and then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city in a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth, whole earth. These were the same people that had heard about Noah and about all the things that had happened. And that generation came up, and they decided to do it their own way. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down in there and confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. And so... That's what the Lord did. You may have heard of this, the Tower of Babel. What is my point? What is my point in bringing this up so many years ago? Have we become a, genera have we become a Genesis 11 generation? Are we doing our own thing? I, I, I know the world out there is. I know the secular world that don't know God is doing their own thing. And they're coming together in, in such a, a, a strong way, but has the church done that? Have we become a Genesis 11 generation? You see, they had one language. The descendants of Noah settled, they built, and the Lord came down. I want you to know the Lord has moved when there's unity. There was unity in a negative way, and God moved. I believe God moves where there's unity. And I believe God removes when there's disobedience. Think about that. Think about what's taking place in, even in the world today, especially in the church. Confusion will reign in a world where God is not welcomed. I'll say that again. Confusion will reign in a world where God is not welcomed. Where have we come from and, and where are we going? Unity, as I said, is not wrong when God is involved. I quoted a little bit of Psalm 133. Think about God's creation. Uh, God's creation, uh, you, ever, you ever seen those uh, history or, or uh, discovery channels where they, you see the fish in the ocean? And man, those things, I don't know how they swim. Like, how about birds in the sky, right? I mean, how do they do that? God's created it that way, and he's created for us to come together. And, uh, and so we need to find out what motivates our unity. In Genesis 11, it was a negative motivator. And the Bible's clear, God desires relationship. And there can be no peace without the Prince of Peace being involved. Genesis 11 generation, building their own kingdom. I'm here to tell you that God would have none of it. And I'm here to tell you in the tw year 2024, God will have none of it. If we as the church are building our own little kingdom, if we as a, a town or a city or a state or a nation is building our own, our own uh, kingdom, God will have no part of it. 
I guess what I'm sharing with you as a pastor, maybe it's a, maybe it's a, 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 a flashing yellow caution light on the condition of what's happening in our world today, especially in our nation. Look, let's gravitate and, and, and be who God's called us to be as the church and rise up and invite God's presence back into this land. You say, well, pastor, we've been doing that. Keep it up. Keep it up. You have opportunity this November to do the same thing. Keep it up. Invite God back in to all that goes on in our nation. Invite him back. How, how do you invite him back? Well, you find out what pleases God. It's kind of simple, isn't it? You just find out what pleases him. And then when you do what pleases God, he's going to be in that presence, right? Now, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But if we're going in the wrong direction, he may just let us do that. Say, this is what you've been asking for. Well, okay, see how it goes. He knows, right? I could take you to the Old Testament. The people wanted a king, right? God said, no, you don't need a king. I, I got you covered. No, we want a king. He gave them what they asked for. The day and hour in which we live, be careful what you ask for. Be careful, you know, what's going on out there. So, as we look at this, we, we you know, unity is important. Unity is, is powerful in God. As we are unified in him, um, he's pleased, and I believe his blessings follow. As I read to you out of Genesis 11, God stopped work in Shinar. He will stop work in the United States when his plan and purpose is ignored. I don't know how much plainer I can say it, guys. You, you can agree to disagree, and I love you. We'll love each other. And you can find a church that maybe, maybe tell you something different. But I'm here to tell you, if we don't live according to the word of God, the principles of God, just like he moved, removed himself from Shinar, he'll remove himself from the United States. Why do we think we're so privileged uh, to where, you know, here we are in this. And look, I thank God. I love our nation. Uh, we've been blessed for 200 plus years going on close to, what is that, 250 years coming up pretty soon. We've been blessed. You look at the Judeo-Christian uh, 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 principles that we have. But, I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that that's being slowly and, and strategically removed from the God of this world. And so, you know, and there again, I, I mean, I love our nation, but who's to say that we don't, we, we take a step back from being a world power, right? I mean, it's our choice, right? And that could happen. So are you ready? Are you going to still serve God? If we're not still on top, if we're still not leading the way? I believe our nation has been tremendously blessed because of what we've done with the resources that we've had, and we've been so very benevolent into other nations and other countries, right? You look at the UN, and, look, and you can just look all this stuff up yourself, and look at who is who, the majority of the ones that are pouring into other nations in the commitment that are made by our European nations that have faltered on theirs. And I, I'm, I'm messing up now. I need to get away from that. But the United States has been very benevolent, but what happens if we start to pull away from God, just like he left Shinar, you know, his hand of blessing on our great land. Just be prepared. Be ready. And is that going to change you serving God? I hope not. I pray not. We'll, 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 we'll have people from Flag Pond maybe helping us. Amen? So we need to talk about doing his business. Amen? We need to talk about uh, uh, walking worthy of the call. Look. Back then, in Genesis 11, look, they had, uh, uh, they had, a uh, uh, they were connected, right? They had uh, one language, right? Until God came in and confused them. I want you to know in Acts chapter 2, something happened. We all have the same language now. I'm talking about as a Christian. The spirit of the living God came and filled a believer. And now we're all in tune with him. Don't you know that, that God himself lives in you and we're connected with him? And though we may be here, 
people across the continent, people across the world is connected with him. We still have that one language right now, amen? And where what happened in, ba in Babel was confusion and scattering, what happened at Pentecost is ordering gathering. He's gathered us together. He's given us direction. I love this generation that's leading us right now. I'm seeing a fire within them that may rekindle a fire within us. Because you know what? They, they're having to go through the schooling. They're having to go through a lot of those things. You and I can look back and see how we used to have prayer in school, right? Uh, we can look back and, and see how uh, um, respect and honor was given to, look, I pray for you that are teaching in these, in these school systems. Our prayers are with y'all. You just see it over and over again, the lack of respect. And so we've come from a generation, myself and others, that you know what, you could still, you know, if you got in trouble, uh, you, you go on to the principal's office and they're going to they gonna go ahead and get the paddle out. And you know, one of the coaches, even worse than the principal is a coach and his paddle had holes in it. And he's going he's gonna to put it on you. And then, and then not only that, it's going to tell your mom and daddy when you get home, you get another whipping. Now they're suing because of that, right? You can't do that anymore. Look, what we see is in Babel, it was confusion and scattering in Pentecost as the church as we rise up is order and gathering. There was the division of languages and now we have the language of the Spirit of God. We can now communicate God's love and His plan. Are we doing that? Are we standing for what God desires for us to do? I want you to, I, I, I pull this up, I want to read it to you. Did you know you were with a global enterprise? Branches all over the world. Representatives in every government. We are into behavior alterations in hospitals, shelters, nursing homes, schools, mechanic shops, everywhere. We care for clients from birth to death. We explain life insurance and fire insurance. Our CEO performs heart transplants. He was born in a small town. He was a carpenter. No home. He was misunderstood. He walked on water. He was condemned to death without a trial. He rose from the dead, and I talk to him every day. Oh, and by the way, his product is free for the asking. He has already paid for all of it. Have you joined him with that? We need to invite and include get God back into our lives, into our communities, into this nation. We need to pray for his mercy. Know that we're connected. Know that he desires to have us fitly framed. I want to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you because there are churches all across this great land. You know, uh, a lot of times we can watch social media or even the local networks or even cable vision, and we can get this, this skewed view. Look, there are people rising up, crying out for revival in the land. Will we be that people that will do the same? Will we pray for mercy? Will we pray for a crying of the revival to take place? Last scripture I, I want to share with you. Um, those that are being water baptized, I know we have the children in here now. What I'm going to do is dismiss you to go in the back. So uh, Curtis will take you back there, kind of show you, you know, where you can change. Uh, and then we're going to invite uh, our praise and worship team to come on back up. Uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll do the water baptism. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope I've given uh, Benny and them enough time to cook in the back. Uh, so, but I want to show you out of 1 Kings chapter 18. This all right? How many of y'all want to be connected, network with others? Look, this is a beautiful land that we live in. You know, you'll be encouraged as you reach out. I promise you this storm that went through is going to do something, I believe, within the church. I've heard situations and circumstances, you know, there's a lot of money that's being poured overseas, right? A ton of money going over there. I don't know how much is being actually given to these storm victims. It may be a grassroots thing that has to take place. I know the Red Cross, Salvation Army, you know, I, I, 
I don't know. I'm not in the know of all those things. But I know if churches will rise up, churches our size, 100, 200 people, connect with another church that's 100, 200 people. Look, we got one language going on. We're not like the Tower of Babel. We're not like Genesis 11. We're like Acts chapter 2. We got filled with his Holy Spirit. It's not coincidence that Brian Liddell, about six or eight weeks ago, God put it on his heart to do a fundraiser. And here we are. Okay, where's the money going? I guess we'll divide it up between the 13 uh, mission, missionaries that we support. Send them all a little extra. And lo and behold, what do you find? Now we have a need. And not only that, this small church called New Life Worship Center has a family in it that's connected with somebody that is flooded out. You think that's coincidence? From New Roads to Flag Pond? I don't think it's coincidence. I think God is doing the work. And if he's doing the work here, how many more places? Oh, that we would have spiritual eyes to see and not get so swept up and swept away with all the commotion that's out there. The world is going to do what the world's going to do. They're still full of confusion and chaos. The world is, right? And so if you're seeking for answers on, on Fox News or MSNBC or Instagram or Facebook or any of those things, look, how many of y'all knew that they had some kind of, some kind of situation that they were these barges, uh, what was that, a strike they were doing, right? And look, I, I'm not opposed to going and buying a little extra, right? I mean, that's okay, we do that. We need to do, we need to be considered that. But if we're so wound so tight that all of a sudden here we are, we are, we are just fretful because the cupboards are gonna be bare. How many of y'all heard that? I could go on and on and on. And look, a broke clock is right two times a day, right? And so eventually, one of these things on Facebook, I remember the five blood moons that were coming up a couple years back. People buying, man, selling books, selling books, selling books. Five blood moons, this is it. I remember President Obama was supposed to be the Antichrist, right? All of that, here it is. We gotta be careful. And look, one day, I mean, the Bible's true. He's coming back. He's returning. And things are gonna happen. Look, things are gonna happen to where there is those that are falling away. Let's not kid ourselves, right? You can read in scripture. There is gonna be a great falling away that's gonna take place. We're praying for revival. How many of y'all praying for revival? Amen. You know, we got to re need revival for sure. But you're going to see a falling away. You're going to see a, a continued, and, and, and I'm not being prophetic, but you're going to see a continued uh, intolerance for Christianity. You're going to see a continued uh, uh, pressure on churches such as ours not to preach the way in which we preach. We've seen that some years ago over in Texas, that they were, they were requiring the, the pastors to, to send in their outlines. This is, I believe, in Houston, Texas, right? To send in their outlines to make sure that they, they're not preaching anything they considered hate, right? And look, I do outlines, but nobody can read mine because it's just chicken scratch. I don't really, I don't, I don't know if some of y'all can read that. I don't know. You can ask me my family some of the things I write my goodness I don't know how they I can read it sometimes they go back on my notes and Holly I, I don't know what that means <laughs> Holly yeah, look at that again maybe I should type I'm gonna just send them the Bible amen this is what we're preaching right so I don't know what I don't know where this nation's going you know you got the prophetic ones saying this one's going in you got those that say look it really it really doesn't matter right as long as we stay focused on God. In, in 1 Kings chapter, it's, it's Elijah. You know the story. Elijah, you know, it didn't rain for several years because of the disobedience of Ahab and the king of, Is, the king of Israel. And Elijah co goes to see the king. And he says, what are you doing here, old troubler of Israel? 
He says it's time for the people to make a choice, to stop faltering between two opinions. If God be God, let him be God. If not, go serve somebody else. I believe that's where we are with the church today. And then God showed up. He showed up and showed off. Amen. And that on top of Mount Carmel. And then I bring this up because Elijah, after God showed up and the people accepted God once again, he was praying on the mountain for rain because that hadn't rained in three plus years. And he prayed and he looked up and there was nothing. And he prayed. He looked up, had a servant go look. The report was nothing. What was it? Seven times that happened. And then the servant comes back and says, and I'm going to use my own kind of terminology here. Uh, uh, he says, well, I, I looked and I saw a cloud, but it was just the size of a man's hand. He's on the mountain, Elijah is. He's looking out there across the sea. And you see a, a cloud the size of a man's hand. And you know what Elijah said by faith? He says, get ready. I hear the abundance of the sound of rain. You know what I'm hearing right now with the church? I'm talking about the remnant, the one that's going to stick with the word of God. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I want you to know you and I are part of that sound of the abundance of rain. Come on now. Are you going to be a part of the sound of the abundance of rain? We're going to be a part of that sound. And then Elijah wrapped his cloak and man, he ran and the rain came. And I believe the rain of God is coming for this, this I guess I'm going to call it the last day's movement. And, and people are coming in to, to Christ. Just like Noah and his, and his family came into the ark, they coming into Christ. Everybody in here? We ready to go? Hallelujah. Let's, let's do this. Uh, um, are the other children coming in? Are they, are they, uh, they want to come see? I, I don't know. Do they come in? No? Okay, they're fine. All right. I think we've got all, all the elementary kids are in here, right? All right. All right, good. Well, Father, we thank you for this message. And Lord, help us to prepare for the sound of an abundance of rain. Help us, Lord, to stand true and stand up. Your word tells us in Ephesians, Lord God, that we're sealed with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we're seated together uh, with you in heavenly places in that spiritual realm. Lord, we're connected by your spirit. Lord, help us to have ears to hear what your spirit is saying in the day and hour in which we live. And that, Lord, as Ephesians says, we would walk worthy, Lord, of, of the calling. And that you have joined us together where each joint supplies a need. Help us, Lord, to hear the clarion call, reporting for duty, Lord, in your, in, in your movement in building your kingdom. We thank you for these here, these six that have decided, Lord, Lord, they're raising their hand, saying, count me in. Lord, I thank you that they've given their life to you, Jesus Christ, invited you into their lives, and that, Lord God, you have great plans and purpose for them. Lord, we thank you for it. We give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm going to turn it over to Brother Brian Liddell, and uh, he's going to uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, moderate what's going to take place next. So this morning we talked about baptism, what it means. It means to be immersed, right? And so it means to be immersed in Jesus is what it's all about. It's a change of heart. And they heard God's call on their life. And they committed. They said, look, we're, we're going to follow him because Jesus said, follow me in baptism. And so <clears throat> of their own free will, they said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to fulfill that scripture today that was Jesus said thousands of years ago to be baptized. And they said, you know what? I'm, I heard that and I want to do that of my own free will. And also like Brother Jimmy mentioned, we talked about, okay, God, I'm giving you permission also to start cutting on this heart and removing things out of my life that I don't need. And putting things in there that I do need to live this Christian life. And so as an act of obedience, they're saying, I'm ready and willing to do that in front of everybody. From now on, I'm going to live for God. Amen. So y'all come on up.
Looks like we have seven this morning. We're going to start with Gavin Davi. Gavin, if you would, come on in. Gavin, I know you went to class this morning to discuss what water baptism is. Have you asked God to forgive you of your sins and invited Jesus into your life? Then you're a Christian. And it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the most precious name in the universe. In Jesus' name. Any family members that want to come up as well and take pictures, feel free to come on and do that. Next, we'll have Gavin's sister, Macy Davi. He just said, let the children come. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Macy, it's been a, ple yeah. it's been a pleasure having you and your family here and being a part of our church. And I'm glad you're making this next step. Have, uh, have you asked God to forgive you of all your wrongdoings and invited Jesus into your life? Yeah. Well, then you're a Christian. It's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the most precious name in the universe, in Jesus' name. Hold your name. Miss Emma Scallon. I mean, Gemma, I'm sorry. Gemma, I knew that. Gemma has been here uh, from her all her life. Miss Gemma. Miss Gemma Scallon. She's been here with us all your life. And today's the day. You've been wanting to be baptized for a while, haven't you? Yeah. And so, Gemma, I know you went to the class this morning. And did you ask God to forgive you of all your own doings, your sins? invited Jesus into your life well then you're a Christian and it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit in the most precious name in the universe in Jesus name, hold your nose Amen So now we have the adults. Miss Nona Bouvet. Her and her husband's been with us for a little while now. It's been a pleasure having y'all as part of our church. Nona, I know you sat in the class this morning. You've been, you and Jason have been faithful here, part of what we're doing. Have you asked God to forgive you of all your sins? Invited Jesus in your heart. It's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the most precious name in the universe, in Jesus' name. Ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Miss uh, Miranda. Miranda, it's been a pleasure you coming and being a part of our fellowship. I know we've talked on the phone and you went to class this morning. And so if you ask God to forgive you of all your sin, invite Jesus in your heart. And you're a Christian part of the body of Christ. It's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the most precious name in the universe, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Miss Miracle. I love that name. Miracle has been with us for some time now. 
She works a lot on Sundays, and I'm glad we were able to schedule when you were off. Amen. Amen. Miracle that you know you've said under our teaching as far as water baptism. And understand that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you ask God to forgive you of your sin and ask Jesus into your life, well, then you're a Christian and part of the body of Christ. So it's my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the most precious name in the universe, in Jesus' name. Tammy Floyd. Miss Tammy, it's been a pleasure seeing you and your family come being a part of our church. It's been such a blessing, you and your family. Who's holding that baby for you? <laughs> nursery, okay. All right, that's good. Glad we're using the nursery. How many of y'all glad for our nursery workers? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> We're so excited for you. Are you nervous? Well, look at me. Hey, you know what the Bible says? It says we all sin and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us. But you know what? God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And have you asked God to forgive you of your sins? Yeah. You invited him into your life, Jesus. Yes. Amen. That means, look at me. That means you're a Christian. You're part of the body of Christ. As the Bible says, you're sealed with His Holy Spirit. As I preach this morning, you're seated together with Him. And this is just an outward sign. So let those tears flow. So look at me. It's my privilege, Tammy. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in the most precious name in the universe. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Won't you stand to your feet this morning? Father, we thank you once again for what you're doing in, in all of our lives, Father. What you're doing uh, in, in these here that have made this public declaration. I thank you for the body of Christ here at New Life Worship Center and all across this world. Help us, Lord, be all that you desire for us to be. We're sure to give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Don't forget about the pastelaya. <laughs>